It's a sunny September day on Plymouth Hoe, and celebrations to mark the Battle of Britain anniversary are taking off. Against this colourful backdrop, a group of stalwarts are marking another turning point in British history. It's the annual Punks Picnic. The event is organised by local punk Chris Wilshire. Leading light in the cabaret punk band, the bus station Loonies. This weekend is the fourth annual Plymouth Punks picnic. So it's like a weekend sort of punk festival, really, um, for both local and visiting people alike. And um, this place that we're in at the moment is pretty much my home as it is for a lot of people who come in here as well. It's like a real sanctuary type place, there's nowhere in. And um, it's sort of acting at the moment as a place for people to meet up uh, who might be going on to the gig later on. Um, and also somewhere for me to sort of forget what I've got to do later on um, and try not to panic too much about various bands who might not turn up this evening. Plymouth Punk's Picnic is one of many across the UK. It's a thriving underground scene that attracts new recruits and veterans. It's not about drinks, it's not about drugs, and it's not even about a particular type of music. It's just about people having fun. In the 70s, um, punk music was the main music. That was, you had disco and none of that, but you had punk acts there in the national papers and the music papers all the time. That was the thing, if you made it as a punk artist, you, you were well known, you were on television, you sold albums and everything. It's more of an underground thing now, but it's just, just as exciting. In, in a way, it's a little bit more exciting. Yeah, I, I first, first got into punk when I was 12 years old, and uh, it was simply, it was the music originally, um, because at the time, it was like, you know, the early 80s, and there was nothing really that I felt that was offered to me in the charts. I, I, didn't, I couldn't relate to anything, I didn't enjoy the music. Um, when I discovered punk, I, di I didn't have any older brothers or sisters or, or anybody like that that was into punk in the first place. I just sort of stumbled across it quite by accident. And I loved the energy, I loved the whole sort of feel of it. And for one reason or another, I've never got sick of it since. You know, I mean, I don't know whether that's a good or bad thing or it's quite sort of pathetic or not, but I love it more than ever, I think. Here we are in the nowhere toilet, the intimate little corner. Um, as you can see, people are sort of adding their own little bits of uh, graffiti, people sort of adding parts to it all the time. There's various sort of references to the loonies. Um, this bit here, um, I added the bit about Wild Johnny just really to get up his nose, I think, at the time. Somebody has actually written a quote from one of our songs where they've actually written, have you any, 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 have you any idea who we are? But I've yet to find out who actually did that. I've got no idea. No one's admitting to it because it would mean they'll actually admit to knowing some of the words to our songs, I think. <laughs> have you any, 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 have you any idea who we are? Who did that for really neat handwriting anyway? <laughs> Hello, I'm Wild Johnny. Hi, I'm Sean O'Porno, bus station loonies, Axe God. No, I'm um, Tony Hopkins. I'm the one that sits in a stall and goes, ah, ah, ah. That's about it, really. It's all I do. Why are you going cross-eyed? <laughs> you can't get more punk than Tony the drummer. He's, he's got to be the most punk end of the band by far, I think. He's, the, he's, he's been into it the longest anyway. Um, and Tony's punk rug all the way. Um, I don't think either John or Sean would describe themselves as punks. Um, but I think they have their own elements of punkness in them, are they really? We, um, it's, I think I think actually while Johnny is getting more and more punk as time goes on, his his attitude towards being a band has changed a lot.
been in a punk band and not been a punk. Um, yeah, it is, it is quite strange. It's, um, when I first started doing it, you'd always feel very straight-laced to everybody else. And it's, it's the other way around. I mean, for Chris, for example, because he feels very intimidated when he goes into, say, a wine bar, whereas, you know, myself, Tony and Sean, no porno, don't even think about that. Um, but as time's gone on, you realise that, especially at the punk gigs, that nobody judges you. But as that bit appropriately says, this place may contain traces of nuts, which I think is very true. That sums it up, which is probably why we're all welcome in here. Oh, your mum's on the phone. OK, then. Your mum's on the phone, apparently. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. Chris is just like this, this beacon that attracts glances from other people. Um, it, it's quite horrible, really, um, because people frown upon it. Your average person, you know, uh, stereotypes um, punks as bad people for, you know, human nature, I suppose. But, you know, and we just think, oh, if only they knew him, you know, because he is such a, such the most mellow guy ever. Um, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't harm a fly. Well, he couldn't harm a fly. Such a wimp. Much as we're all lovely and great, everyone only looks at Wheelie when we're playing anyway, so it doesn't matter what we look like, we could kind of do the whole kind of handlebar hand moustache kind of metal motorhead thing, and we'd just be kind of background noise anyway. Everyone looks at Wheelie prancing around, see, and that's, see, why, that's why he gets all the women. Yeah, but what you forget, right, is and that... the blokes. And the blokes. Yeah. <laughs> see, see what, what, you, what you forget is that, like, without Wheelie, like, we are nothing, but Wheelie without us is like... Um, Val Dunican with a Mohican. Contrary to popular belief, I actually don't like the attention <laughs> that it actually gives, but that's sort of like you take the rough with the smooth, really, I think. It's the first gig night of the Plymouth Punks picnic, and Chris's old band, CDS, are playing. They got back together for a one-off last year after another band pulled out with just hours to go. Savage, who's a bass player, myself, had sort of lost touch with each other completely. So I phoned Dan, the guitarist, and he wasn't very keen on doing it without a practice. Which I don't think is a very punk attitude, actually. But, um, uh, and that was that. He just refused, so I thought, we've got enough bands then. Went down to the venue, then had a phone call from Savage. First time I'd spoken to him in nearly five years. And he just said, yeah, we'll do it. He persuaded Dan, and we went along and, and played. And it was probably the most enjoyable tight gig we've ever done, I think. It says something, I don't know what, but it says something about what the band were like. We never made any money out of it <laughs> at all. We used, to, we used to get food. Somebody used to give us food, didn't they? We used to get food every now and again, but we come from quite good homes, so food wasn't a tremendous rarity anyway. Um, and we just had a really good laugh. We had a really, really good laugh. That's what it's all about. When, like tonight, we were playing, and there's, well, I hate to say it, but a young boy dancing around in a Ramones T-shirt, I'm thinking, bloody hell, that could have been me like 15, 16 years ago. And there's this kiddie bopping around in a Ramones T-shirt, and it's nice to see people enjoying it. Um, if they come along and they enjoy it, and they're having a laugh, and they're not hurting anybody, then let them do it, you know? <laughs> Well, punk is a way of expressing punk to us, yourself. Yeah. You know? It's a way of life, it's our feelings come out. <coughs> I mean, we play in a band because that's what we want to do. We want to play music for a living. Like, if you want a sex business out, why do they play music? No, you can spend all week doing normal things like in everyday life, and then when it comes to the jam on the weekend, you can just let yourself go.
best music. Don't like playing things in the tower green. It's the easiest music to play. That's just kind of rocky, no turn it and stuff. Why do you play at this style of music? Why do you like it? We're, We're not that MS technical. Bit. We're not gifted, and it's the simplest yeah. form of music to play. And it gets me going. <laughs>
My aspirations to join the Loonies were I'd heard they were a fairly well known punk band and I was from out of town. And I thought I'd turn up in Plymouth, join the Loonies, walk down the street and just go, loads of ladies coming up to me and saying, hey, you sure I'm Paul? And the only person who's ever come up to me in any random local place, uh, public place, and said, hey, you're Sean O'Connor, was a bloke in the toilet of a club. <laughs> and I was having a piss at the time, and he grabbed me around the waist and said, Sean O'Porno, and I was pissing all over the walls and things like that. So obviously that wasn't particularly memorable. Well, it was memorable, but it wasn't what I was after. It wasn't what you joined the band. It wasn't what I joined the band for, no. While the previous night's gig was furnished with a professional sound system, tonight Chris is not quite so organised. Well, is very organised. It's me that supplies the punk organisation, which means crap. Exactly, I was thinking he was going to give a cutting comment. Yeah, I thought he was going to as well. They need me. They need me. Chris, how are you feeling? Have you been drinking? Yes. <laughs> Purely medicinally, though. Really? You yes. have to remember your words. <laughs> oh, no, she won't mind that. <laughs> what happened? Did you change the lyrics to suit your memory at this stage? <coughs> Most definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's a sort of question of sort of artistic license, I think. Whatever actually comes to mind is the lyrics of the evening, really. Um, it doesn't help the others any at all, but it'll, it'll get by. I rely on the others because they're actually so so damn competent. That's not actually true, really, but um, they're more competent than I am. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I am incompetent. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. No, I've just been going with the swing of things. Really trying to sort of uh, get into the sort of. Yeah, I have been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. for the kids, the streets of Plymouth. It's sort of like, uh, um, we like our hardcore, we like our punk rock. And... Oh! <laughs> oh! That's very punk. There's, an, there's another member of our band. Um, we never waste beer. This is one thing we don't never waste beer, you see? Well, I don't like to call it the original punk for a start. Do but I do listen to the older stuff. Term. The older stuff, what do we listen to? Like, we'd be listening to the Wurzels, yeah. say, yeah. on the way here, we listen to the Wurzels. Well, I think the Wurzels are probably more punk than, say, I don't know, what's that part? Everyone, they're not punk. Everyone seems to think they're... They, the sex the Pistols? Yeah, the Sex like Pistols. Like, like sex pistols. We, I don't like the Sex Pistols at all. Mm, you put the Sex Pistols hard. against the Wurzels any time, and I'll back the Wurzels every time. I'll be down there fist fighting ready for the Wurzels, do you know what I mean? Let's do loonies. The thing is, it's like there are elements of punk which are quite perceived as being fairly cool and stuff like that. A whole kind of new wave skate punk sort of thing. We just totally don't fit into that niche. <laughs> Bands that have a lot, sort of, got a lot more talented musicians get quite pissed off because it's not to say we're famous, but we got like, the punks picnic deuce and people have already heard of us. You got up the line, and people are wearing Looney's t-shirts, and that's quite scary. <laughs> Chris 
Chris's antics on stage, it's embarrassing, to be quite honest. Um, the funny thing is, he does all these antics, and, and the next day he complains of bruises, he's done his back in countless amount of times, he's covered in bruises, cuts, he'll roll around the floor and broken beer glass, and then he's just like, scraped to hell. But he, he loves it. I, I, I think he gets into a little world of his own when he's up there. But it is funny, and we, you know, you can't knock a man for trying. Sign, but it was good fun. I think we enjoyed it. Let me just put a thought in your head tonight, and I will do this to you. Songs of Praise. You've seen Songs of Praise. You know those churches are empty when the camera isn't there. I've been to many a bus station in the gig. No fucker turns up. Never. It's been all right. It's been all right again. Sure. I'm happy. Definitely. <laughs> all right, I'm a customer. Right? I thought, you know, I don't know what it'd be like, but I'm satisfied. That's good. That's good. That's good to know. Yeah, we'll shake hands on that one. <laughs> Look yeah. at that. Look at that. Is that a happy face? Leave the holidays in the sun. I've, I've been co consistently into punk now for the past, what would that be, uh, about 17 years. And I think if I've, if I've been into it that far and I've, I've not sort of strayed for it, I've not, never gone off it, so I think it's seen me all through my teens and all through my 20s, so, yeah, I reckon so. I reckon 30s, 40s and beyond, I hope, as long as it still keeps going. What about the, the image? Cause... Uh, make, make a bit of a gag about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's a bit of a difficult one, I think, because um, unfortunately hair loss is a bit of a worry of mine, particularly as I'm going the same way as my dad. So, uh, um, yeah, it, it, when, when the hair falls out, I think there's something else I can do. I won't just let it go from there. I think there's something else, definitely, I think. I want to keep, keep some part of the look. Because it's all very tongue-in-cheek, I think. It's all a bit cartoony and ridiculous, and that's how I feel my life is anyway. The bus station movies is not a registered trademark, but a concept created by a ball felching punk. It's a wonderful, you know, it's a wonderful sort of therapy, I think, for a lot of people. Punch cut. It is, it is very noisy. It's loud, it is aggressive. I think the music is, is probably the most aggressive thing about punk. I think punk now has got nothing to do with, aside from what people think, I, I would think, I don't think it's got anything to do with the look or anything like that at all. I do it because... Ever since I was 14, I wanted to have my hair like this. Mummy, look! A red Indian! Dad, look! It's Frankenstein! 
get so many comments really I, it just sort of blurs after a while people aren't worried about what people look like they're not worried about ages you go to punk gigs and you you know you get people of 15 you get people of 50 and no one bats an eyelid about it you know it's just this i think it has survived because it has remained sort of open-minded all that time are you banned <laughs> in the southwest now you you know, at your average punk gig, you know, you get people who are into goth, people who are into skate punk, people who are into heavy metal as well, people who are into thrash, people who are into narco punk, just standard original punk, silly punk, all this sort of thing. And they're all there, and they're all just like, they, that's what I mean about the unity thing, it's just coming together a lot more. I might be looking at it a little bit through those tinted specs because I love it, so I love all the aspects of it so much. But I do think that is happening, a lot of people seem to think that's happening now. It's a lot healthier, I think, than it ever has been. It's probably better now, I think. Now it's out of the sort of the national consciousness. They don't wash <laughs> There is a definite thing that we, we don't have to wear the latest clothes, we don't have to buy the latest things. I think it's, it's more accepting now. It's more of a, I think it should always be more of an attitude than a look. I think you can just apply a term about what it is because there's so many different types and there's lots of people that definitely still are even though there's responsible adults well, most of the ones I know have got jobs certainly it's most people just go to have fun and the whole punk thing has influenced a lot of areas of different culture and media and stuff like that. And it hasn't gone away, and that in itself has influenced people, even though they don't realise it's come from a sort of punk background. I bought this at a gig. It's um, obviously a record. But it's, there's three bands on it. It's an EP. Um, and they just put all their information on here if you want to contact them. So you can literally ring them up and say, when's your next gig, or have you got any more stuff? And you can just talk to the guys in the band, and it's that whole accessibility thing. In the early days of punk, I think a lot of it was to do with, um, I think a lot of this was possibly down to the media as well, but a lot of it, the anti-social side of things was promoted quite heavily. It's all a disguise, it's all a release, it's all a safe release. It's a channeling your aggression, it's getting it out. In a, in a totally harmless way. So that's why you generally find that m the majority of people who are into it aren't violent, aggressive people. It's about creativity, it's about communication, it's not about just consuming. You're watching the bus station Looney. My name is Chris Wheelchair and uh, for my sins I'm the singer of the bus station Looney's flanked by um, Oliver Largen, who's the brand new guitarist in the band. While Johnny, who's the uh, bass player. Tony Pop Kids who sort of sits at the back and hits things and occasionally makes comments that we all ignore. And that's basically the lineup that we are now today. The 
the bus station is actually a concept created by Chris the Felcher Wheelie, who's the uh, singer. Um, it started a long time ago actually because myself and him we were looking at uh, forming a band uh, specifically to do things like uh, covers of uh, famous TV adverts, uh, Shaken and Vac and uh, Trago Mills, loads of things like that. That's what we talked about ages ago. Um, Anxiety Society was the start of it. It was like a little band that I'd played guitar for a little bit, and then uh, then it turned into Bus Station Loonies. Chris started it. I didn't want to be part of it because I had better things to do. Um, then I was asked to stand in to play bass. I never played bass, but um, I used to play guitar, and then I was roped in to play uh, bass for a bit. So I did that, and then um, it was all downhill from there, really. I got roped into it, but loved every minute of it. I used to play drums in various different bands, and I got fed up with being the one who was ignored at the back. I now know how, how I know how Tony feels, and he doesn't mind it. Um, I got a bit fed up with that, and I wanted to I wanted to jump up and down. That was really the reason why. And uh, so I got in touch with a few mates of mine at the time who were in local bands and were sort of fed up with the seriousness of the bands. And um, we got together and formed the band that way. Did it originally just as a joke, we thought it was going to be like a one-off little thing, and um, we're still doing it about seven years on. The joke must be wearing a bit thin by now, but people still seem to enjoy it, so that's the main thing really, including ourselves. Where do we get inspiration from? Noise, basically. Things that make us happy. Everything for fruit. Let's go back, come on down. Catch a bus in the town. I feel like ducking and a dive. I've had a dreadful week. Oh god, look, it's a geek. Oh misery, who does the drive? The songwriting's changed a bit because we've had a few uh, members uh, coming and going over the over the years, but um, the original songwriting was Chris used to come up with a cheesy tune on a, on a cheesy Casio keyboard, um, give the guitarist some ideas, and then we'd all work it out from there. We've never really been a band for jamming songs out, but somebody usually comes to the, to the practice with an idea, and then we'll take it from there. But they're always dreadful, but it's good fun. Initially, I think I started writing most of the songs, but we're now getting to a stage for the first time where the other three are putting a lot more input into it as well, which, as far as I'm concerned, is to be applauded because I'm a lazy sod and I'm quite happy for the others to do more and more. <laughs> If you give one loud cough, he shot to throw you off. Deserve to taste somebody's boots. They suck. We play all over the country. Um, it's becoming more and more over the country. Um, not very many because all of us work um, or strive to work. So it's very difficult to actually play within the week. But we play weekends and where we can, as and when we're invited to play elsewhere. But the further afield, the better. We love it. I think people are probably getting a bit sick of us locally because we did reach a stage a couple of years ago where we were playing locally all the time and we were happy doing this because it meant we didn't have much travelling involved at all but um, I think we reached a stage where we started to get more and more people elsewhere who wanted us to play so the only trouble was was that because the others have lives outside of outside of being in a punk band, um, they've got other commitments which always come first. But if we can do gigs as well, we do, and we've started to do that now quite a bit. I mean, we play at a lot of other punk festivals and picnics and uh, bikers festivals and parties and that sort of thing, benefits, whatever. I mean, really, as far as I'm concerned, anyone who wants to play will do it in one form or another. Will do it. A few weeks ago we played Brighton, London, we're playing the London Garage headlining um, this Wednesday coming, playing on a UK tour during July and Europe at some point. Quite boring, you take over and do some drawing Buy for a shelter 
just non-existent Nuclear wars are inconsistent Claustrophobic in your bunker You're all so trendy Well, I'm a punter Hopes for the future of the band. New album. I think, yeah, do a bit more recording. Keep Ollie happy in that respect. Well, just keep playing. Keep playing and keep playing. That's about it, really. As long as we can keep playing. Keep enjoying it. World domination. That's all I can say.